Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Everyone, welcome to the show. So I'm going to be honest with you. Today's January 6th hearing was a bit of a bore, at least for anybody who's been following all of this already. Um, The overall theme was basically how Donald Trump's lies and his tweets incited the anger and ultimately the violence that we saw at the Capitol. Um, It also highlighted, which was interesting, how it was planned, how there was advanced planning. This wasn't just a spur of the moment thing and spur of the moment decision to go to the Capitol. So I'm going to explain that, but there weren't many bombshells. Uh, Probably the biggest one came at the end of the hearing when Liz Cheney explained that Trump tried to call one of the witnesses. They didn't give a lot of details, but she did say It's someone that we haven't seen yet and that they've forwarded this information to the Justice Department. They also showed excerpts from Pat Cipollone's testimony. That, of course, was Trump's White House counsel. There were also bits of data shared that gave greater meaning to certain things that we've already heard about. Um, It really helped to bring a timeline into focus. So, for example, the committee went into detail about a batshit crazy meeting that Trump had with Sidney Powell, Mike Lindell, um, the Overstock CEO or former CEO, I forget his name at the moment, um, and other people, Mike Flynn, evidently this was like a Jerry Springer episode in the West Wing. And some of the attendees were actually physically threatening each other to fight. Um, What happened was that when Trump's White House counsel discovered that these people basically snuck into the Oval Office, they flew down the hallway and they tried to break it up because Pat Cipollone explained he thought they were giving Trump bad advice, which they were. And according to Cipollone and Eric Hirschman, there was screaming and cursing. People were calling each other names. They were insulting each other. At one point, Hirschman offered to fight Mike Flynn. Um, And this was the meeting in which Trump posited the idea about naming Sidney Powell special counsel. And he talked about seizing voting machines, you know, having the military seize machines. And Hirschman said, you know, he thought all of these ideas were just nuts. That was an exact quote. And when he confronted Powell about their 60 plus court losses, she said, oh, well, all the judges are corrupt. And so then Hirschman, in essence, said that's when he lost his shit with her. And Powell admitted in her deposition that Trump's White House counsel said, yeah, you could make her, they told Trump, you could make her special counsel, but no one's going to pay any attention to her. And Giuliani was also there and he told Trump's counsel that they were all pussies. That was another direct quote. So apparently this meeting went on until after midnight. This was on the 18th of of December of 2020. Well, around 1.30 a.m., December 19th, so less than two hours after all of these lunatics left the White House, that's when Trump sent out his tweet inviting everyone to come to D.C. and said, we'll be wild. So it seems possible that one of two things, or maybe both, you know, maybe during this Jerry Springer marathon meeting, there was some sort of agreement made or some sort of decision made about January 6th. And that's when they hatched the whole idea. Or it's possible that, you know, because all of his other ideas got shot down, he then said, okay, I guess the new, you know, plan B is January 6th. That's when it's going to go down. Again, it could be both. Um, And then the committee showed how right-wing pundits, YouTubers, the public, they all 
took Trump's tweet and ran with it. They, you know, included video of people with very large platforms who were basically calling people to come and, you know, storm DC on behalf of Trump, people with large platforms like Alex Jones, Tim Pool, and others. And one of their recorded witnesses explained how after Trump issued his tweet, multiple violent extremist groups and individuals all started to coordinate online and their missions started to align with each other. They also displayed numerous social media posts that were calling for violence against Democrats in general. I mean, a ton of different threats, but one was calling for, you know, Democrats to be murdered. One even said to kill every man, woman, and child. And then others were specifically calling for murdering the police. One cited a, quote, red wedding. 